Have you ever thought about your inkjet printer and how it clogs up and refuses to work right? Well, one of the reasons why it does that is your cartridges get really dirty on the inside, on that bottom side where the head is. That's not the only problem. I mean, those gunk up, but when they get gunked up and it does the little self-clean thing, down here inside, and you can't really see it very well, there are actually little sponges. And those sponges collect ink. That is their entire life. They don't do anything but that. And they are not removable, at least not under normal circumstances. So we're going to use some extraneous knifing and try and pull one of these things up to see how bad it is. And it is not coming up. This is a pain. This was a bad idea. No, no, there it goes. There it goes. Almost got it. As I said, these are not meant to be removed at all. And the thing is, this is a dead printer that I don't care about other than salvaging some parts. Well, let me get that head out of the way. There. Let's get something more substantial, like a pair of pliers. Yeah, get in there. There we go. Okay. Now, you see this sponge here? And that sits there, and that just collects the ink. It just soaks in, and you can see all the colors in there. And when that eventually fills up, you have to replace the printer. Now, this printer here has had quite a few years of service. So, generally speaking, it's not too much of a problem. But, as you can see here, there's a bunch of ink there that has died. And let's go ahead and try and pull this one up here using the knife was probably a good idea. Let's continue doing that. I am just curious to see how bad this one is filled up. This is the black, and this is the one that gets used the most. Hey, I can grab onto it now with the pliers. There we go. And let's give it a nice pull. Hey, yeah, that one has definitely seen better days. I mean, you can literally see where the ink just drops on there. And has eaten away? Maybe, I don't know, but it looks like there's still some wet ink on there. But uh, quite a mess. Now the other fun thing is tearing down one of these printers, you get these nifty little mortars here. And you know, they're just cheap DC mortars, no big deal, reversible, very simple, drives a little worm gear. But the cool thing is this, instead of using a proper stepper mortar, which would be the best thing to do, they use this rotary encoder here, and you can see right here there's a sensor. And you can control it by connecting onto there, or just soldering onto the leads right there, which is what I'll probably end up doing, because it's just, you know, less trouble to do than trying to use that silly flat cable there. But the rotary encoder lets them use a really cheap mortar and still get granularity and control. And it's just funny because this is literally just a very thin plastic. There's another one that I pulled out of this same printer, which I'm planning on using in some sort of project. And you can see this one here. Well, the camera's not even picking it up. But it does have lines on it. Very, very fine lines. You think it autofocus? No, nope, no. Nope. But there's very fine lines on there. This one here came out of the scanner. And that gives a great deal of granular control as opposed to the other one which I showed you, which is this one here. And this one here was for uh, paper feeding, and you don't need nearly as much control there. It's just, you know, oh, we're fed, you know, fed it a little bit, and it's good. Anyway, so that is one of your lessons on uh, printers. The other thing is when you take apart printers, you really need to have one of these guys here. This is a specialty screw set. So you'll unlock all sorts of special, strange, weird, like tri-bit screws and other things that you don't normally run into. And there's some in here where they've got the hole in the center or the little peg in the center. It's just weird. Anyway, that is it.